think I took in total three practice exams. And so when it came exam day, I knew it was, you know, there was that kind of pressure of, okay, this is the real one. But in the back of my mind, I was like, I've done this three times before I got this. So went into the testing room and again, just kind of, you know, clicked one question after the other and it was, felt pretty good. Isaac? I was seeing how are you doing today? Good, good. How are you? Doing well. So Zach, congratulations on passing your FE electrical exam in the first attempt with me, uh, with study for FE. And I believe overall it was your second attempt, right? Yes, that is correct. Thank you. Okay. So Zach, how about you provide me a little bit of your background when you graduated, when you decided to take the exam, how you prepared for the initial attempt, how you prepared for the second attempt, and what were the lessons learned, basically? Of course, yeah. So I got my undergrad from Texas A&M in electrical engineering. I uh, graduated uh, last year, 2022, um, and chose, unfortunately, to take my exam one week after I graduated. Okay. Um, so that was post-finals. There was a lot of crazy, I would not recommend taking it immediately after you graduate, unless you put in a lot of prep ahead of time, which I did not do. The only thing I did to prepare the first time was I purchased the NC um, EES, their practice exam, which was 100 questions, I think, not even 110. Right. Yeah. And that was it. That was the only thing I did. So I went through there front to back and uh, thought, okay, I did the practice exam. I'm good to go. Man, when I took the test the first time, it was not <laughs> nothing like the practice exam. It was way too small of a problem set. Right. Um, so, you know, feeling pretty discouraged from that. I took a year, um, just started working full time, kind of put it out of my mind. And then back towards the beginning of this year, 2023, um, you know, started getting back in gear of getting to take this test again, get it out of the way and started researching, you know, different study programs and videos and that sort of thing. And uh, actually stumbled across your course on Reddit and it was very reasonably priced for what it was. I purchased your book from Amazon and uh, yeah, going through that was a very different experience. Um, I think the biggest thing for me was the categorization of the problems just mm -hmm. helped me so much because when I, did that first practice exam, you know, it lists out a hundred questions and it gives you, you know, the categories to expect on the test, but it doesn't tell you which question each category is in. So, whereas, you know, your course, both the book and the um, live training and the on-demand course, um, you know, you break it down very clearly into where these questions match. And so when I did go and take that test the second time, I'd see a question, and then immediately, like, okay, this is a category it falls in and kind of get my mind into the right gear before solving it and going through. So, yep, I passed the second time, of course, with your help, and it was much, much easier. So, no, that's a wonderful story, uh, Zach, and uh, a couple of observations that I've made uh, while you were explaining your journey. Uh, the first thing... Um, Granted, you were a recent graduate. You went to a pretty good school. Texas A&M is, is a very good school, uh, known for its um, engineering, arguably one of the best schools in Texas, I believe, for engineering. Um, so you tried, uh, tested the water, basically, right, um, in your final, the final week. But then why did you take such a big hiatus, a complete air off after the first failure? Was it just because you got shocked or you had other things going on that uh, distracted you or took your mind away from the exam prep or a combination of both, I guess? Uh, yeah, the it was definitely a combination of things. Um, we had you know, graduated, actually moved into a house um, in a different city and again, starting full-time work, which was kind of a shock from going part-time to full-time. Yeah. And then I was, yeah, a little discouraged. I was like, okay, wow, that was much more difficult than I was anticipating. Is this something I even want to pursue? Um, and so after talking with my boss and mentor a little bit about it, you know, it's like, 
maybe you didn't prepare enough the first time, let's kind of do a breakdown, a lessons learned of how we can maybe get this second attempt, you know, a little better. But yeah, there was just kind of a combination of things that made me wait a year. And it was actually kind of funny. It was, it felt really good getting back to studying after uh, taking a year off of academic things. Okay. And so when I started preparing again, it was like, I don't know, stretching an old muscle, you know, that you haven't really done in a minute. And so it felt good to kind of get back in the swing of things of studying on a consistent schedule. So, right. So it was, it was a nice break. And uh, the more important thing is that you didn't give up. And to be quite honest, all else being equal, you are still very early in the game because, you know, the average um, student that I have in my FE program, I'm not talking about even the PE power program. In the FE program, the average student is at least five to seven years out of school. So a lot of students, a lot of electrical engineers get this realization about the importance of the FE exam quite a bit down the road so one year out of the school you made it happen that's that's great um and small hiccups along the way more importantly you basically didn't give up right you came back to it and you did it in style apparently because i remember you sending me an email after uh, taking the exam you're like well see my thing i passed it very few students are able to by the way say that right because the exam shakes you so what was your exam day experience like zach um well before we get to that, I think the couple days or a couple weeks rather leading up to it definitely helped me feel so confident and relaxed on exam day. Um, so in your uh, preparation framework, you have, you know, okay, take a practice exam, you know, starting three weeks before study and then a week after take another practice exam. Um, so I think I took in total three practice exams. And so when it came exam day, I knew it was, you know, there was that kind of pressure of, okay, this is the real one. But in the back of my mind, I was like, I've done this three times before I got this. So went into the testing room and again, just kind of, you know, clicked one question after the other and it was, felt pretty good. Of course, I mean, I feel like regardless of how much you study, there's going to be things that you stumble on, maybe forget um, For sure. something that you might not have come across, but even then, you know, I was still able to kind of work my way through using the uh, tips you gave me as well as the reference handbook to kind of squash those problems I was a little unsure of. Right. So it was a much more comfortable experience the second time around after you had done all the heavy lifting. So you use pretty much all of my resources. You use a study guide. You use uh, the NCS sample exam. I highly recommend that. You use my on-demand course. You also use my um, uh, live training in a crash course style. Right. So once you put in all of this work, then obviously your odds of success is going to increase significantly. Um, do you know roughly how many hours you ended up spending on this project for your exam prep? Rough, rough ballpark, 100, 200, 300? Uh, well, it was, it was over four months. So I'd say between two to three, probably 250, I would say 250, 250. 275. Okay. Um, yeah. So the 250 to 300 hour bracket. Uh, that's basically what you ended up investing. And were there any big breaks uh, along the way, uh, some hiccups you had to do deal with roadblocks or improvisation? Um, no, there was some vacations that we had planned um, during that four month period of studying. And I kind of knew ahead of time going into it that, you know what, I'm gonna have to bring my study guide, you know, even if we didn't have access to Wi-Fi, just jot down some questions. You know, even if it was 45 minutes towards the end right. of the day, you know, right before you go to bed, instead of scrolling my phone, I just grabbed the book, you know, knock out some questions here and there. And usually I would actually spend a lot more time. Like I just right. tell myself 30 minutes, I would end up, you know, studying for 30 plus, it was closer right. to an hour usually, even yeah. on days that I wasn't studying. Yeah. Um, so consistency was really the name of the game. And just knowing that, okay, I'm gonna carve out a small section of my day, you know, for a couple of questions definitely helped. So no, there wasn't any significant gaps or uh, big hurdles other than, yeah, not having access to Wi-Fi for a little bit and just having to use the, the old hard copy. But that's why you buy the, I don't know where it is, the, the paperback. That's yeah. So that's at the back right there, right? That yeah. one. Yep. That's the one. Yeah. All right. Great. Uh, so consistency is the name of the game. I think uh, we should end at that. And then I look forward to helping you with your P exam preparation. 
a lot of effort goes into passing these exams, but you know, it's a one-time effort and it pays the dividends rest of your career, gets you the recognition, gets you the respect um, and uh, responsibility promotions, all good stuff, right? It's, it's a whole package. And most importantly, what a lot of my students tell you, me, and you can comment on that, is basically the self-confidence and the sense of achievement that you get after um, you know realizing this hard-earned uh, goal. What are your thoughts about that? 100%. I actually was pulling into a job site as soon as I got my email saying, you know, your test results have been released. So I looked and I passed it. I was like, you know what? Whatever happens the rest of the day, it's okay. <laughs> I passed. We're good. So yeah, that's amazing. Keep up the good work, Zach, and uh, we'll stay in touch. Thank you. Thank you.